Hello, you gorgeous human being. It is Susie Ashworth and you are listening to the Infinite Receiving Podcast. And I have got a very special episode for you today. It is our first interview with the incredible Regan Hillier, who is a magical unicorn of a human being. We go to all of the places in this conversation. We talk wealth, we talk success, we talk about what it feels like to cross $33 million in just 10 months. We talk about love, we talk about the state of the world and what our vision and the mission is. So this is a long one. So grab yourself a cup of tea and a slice of cake and remember to let me know how much you love this interview. And in the meantime, do not forget that faith plus action equals miracles. Okay, I am so excited right now. I can barely contain myself. And the the beautiful thing about this is that you can actually see how big I'm smiling because we're on camera. We're on camera. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the Infinite Receiving Podcast. And our journey started, I think, maybe five, maybe six years ago. And to see who you were when we first met, and also who I was, and then to see who you are now and how much you've grown and how much your heart has just expanded and expanded and expanded is just, I don't know, it's just quite remarkable. Like you are an incredible human being, you're (laughs) a mentor, you're a friend, and you inspire me like every single day. Mm. So thank you so much for being here. I want to say again, because it's the second time that we have had an interview together, but it's the first time on the Infinite Receiving podcast. And I couldn't think of a better person to open up this new chapter with. So Mm. Regan, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Here we are all these years later. (laughs) I know. And in Europe for the first time. Yes. We're in Amsterdam. And on camera officially for the first time in this podcast. (laughs) So do you want to tell people, like, how would you introduce yourself? Well, that's a great question. I think (laughs) someone asked me this actually at the summit that I'm speaking at. They're like, how do you introduce yourself? And I was like, look, it kind of, it varies and it shape shifts depending on who I'm talking to or, you know, at the core of my essence, I'm Regan, you Mm. know, and, and my goal every day is to be the best, shiniest version of myself to create the biggest impact. Mm. And then how that looks every day is a little bit different in terms of the people I'm connecting with or what, what's going on in that day. And so that might look like a full day of entrepreneurship that might look like speaking that might look like magical woo woo creation you know so i feel the identities shift and change um yeah. but for me it's it's a very multi-dimensional identity that i've crafted and played with and continue to explore just around how i can be more me every day i love this because i feel like our purpose and our mission is just to become more of ourselves yeah like how much more full of myself can i become yeah. and when i hear you talk from that perspective i'm like that's been the shift maybe that mm. i just see you becoming more and more and more of yourself yeah. on a daily basis i know that some people listening to you say the biggest, I think you said the biggest and the best or the best and the shiniest version of myself. Does that ever feel like pressure? I don't know if it feels so much like pressure, but I think it can, it can feel a little uh, intimidating sometimes because sometimes I feel like I'm connecting with this higher version of me that wants to come down and through and be embodied. And I still sometimes get caught in those moments of like, oh, no, 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 that's going to be too much. Mm. <laughs> oh, no, 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 like that's, that's, and, and new stories pop up. That will make me unrelatable to people. So I won't share this. So I won't share that. Or oh, there's no need, you know, there's no need because I don't need the external validation. And then I remember that, okay, it's maybe not about the external validation. Maybe it's about owning your shininess and your bigness and being that permission slip for so many other people. And so I find that whenever I center myself back into service, all the stories tend to drop away. And mm-hmm. if I find myself come out of that center of service and I get lost in the ego or the stories or the mind, then that, that's when the that's when those frequencies can come in, you know. So yeah, I don't think it's so much pressure, but I think there's still like <laughs> the lower self that tries to creep in <laughs> and like suppress it. <laughs> it is interesting hearing you say 
that might make me unrelatable. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Because the life that you lead is really unrelatable to most people. <laughs> It's like yeah. all of the levels, it's just quite insane. Yeah. I, I Yeah. I mean, it's inspiring, but I don't think most people can relate to being halfway through a four month tour where they're speaking on stages all over the world and touching thousands of people. Yeah. I feel it's that line where it's... Um... It's taking that stand and standing in your higher self and being that permission slip and knowing that you're going to call the right people forward into that, mm -hmm. you know, because I think even if someone looks at that and they're like, wow, you know, that's like maybe 10 steps forward, maybe from where I am right now, if there's a part of them that's even inspired by it, then mm -hmm. for me, that's, that's okay. You can relate. Right. Yeah. There's a part of you that's woken up and is like, Ooh, that's exciting. That's, yeah. that's that that would be amazing that would be cool and then from that place it's like the the inspiration is is sparked and so i think i ran this story for a long time where i was like maybe i'll become so like non-relatable that i won't even be inspirational because i'll be so mm -hmm. like separate from people and then i realized that separation's an illusion yes. anyway <laughs> so again another construct that my lower self you know created in an attempt to keep me smaller mm -hmm. and like more in my comfy zone and like more connected in the sense of like oh i fit in here you yes. know and yeah some of us weren't born to fit in some of us were born to maybe stand in that light and then inspire others to like come into this new frequency so they can fit into the frequency rather than dropping yourself down into an old frequency in an attempt to fit into the illusion, you know. Hmm. You've just recently shared a huge milestone. And I know from, I feel like when you first had your first million dollar month, and I know that that was a big deal in terms of you sharing that with <laughs> yeah, the <it> public, <laughs> <laughs> you, that you did that. And now <laughs> we're in October, and you've just crossed $33 million. How did it feel to share that? Like, when did you find out? What's the time frame from when you found out and then when you shared? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, I don't share too much mm. on income stuff now. Mm. And and I, I always check in and I'm like, okay, is this my lower self playing the game and being like, you don't need to share, stay in your comfort zone? Or is it just not aligned in that moment to share? And so I'm always checking in. And even this year, I mean, we crossed the 30 million mark, yeah. right? But it, it didn't, I mean, I celebrated in my introvert way, but I didn't really feel the aligned guidance of like share now. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And I trusted that. I was like, oh, maybe we'll share at 40 or like, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was coming up to my birthday actually. And um and I felt it. I felt this call, this intuitive call. And it was like, it's time to speak about the numbers. And I was mm. like, okay. And then I was like, okay, let me go and like check what the numbers are. And then I realized like, okay, we're about to cross the, <laughs> the 33 mark. And then I was like, and I'm turning 33 years old. Like, hang on, this is actually yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah. And the guidance came through. And I definitely, I definitely felt, um, yeah, uncomfortable sharing mm. it again, you know? And yeah, it's just interesting. It's like that same feeling. It was the exact same feeling actually when when it was that first million dollar month. Mm. It was that same like ah oh, kind of thing. Um, but I recognized the feeling and um, I didn't get stuck in it. I think when I was even, I remember sharing like the even crossing the first million per year, for example, it was the yeah. same feeling. It was like, oh my God, what's everyone gonna think? Yeah. And all of this, you know, but my speed now in moving through that feeling has accelerated. I don't get stuck in it, but whereas before I would get stuck in it for a longer period of time yeah. and be like, I don't know, should I, should I, da, 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 you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Did you receive any pushback from people who were triggered by the number? You know, actually, weirdly, this time I haven't. That's so interesting. I know. I know. And I'm very aware of that. There hasn't been one comment, one DM. Wow. One email. Wow. One text, nothing from a family member, zero. And this is like something to explore because this is unusual because every other time there has been. There's yeah. been. I remember even like yeah even even crossing like a million dollars a year there was there was like there was haters there was this there was that there was like people triggered there was like all this stuff and there hasn't been this time 
there's been inspiration, there's been gratitude, there's been celebration, there's been, wow, there's there's been you inspire me, there's been like people having internal shifts and a whole lot of love and like not one that I'm aware of, Yeah, at least. I think that that is incredible. Do you think that that has anything to do with how your energy has shifted? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and I knew this in the beginning too. And, and, you know, I've never, I'm not someone who's got like a whole lot of hate online. There are some people where they like kind mm -hmm. of thrive off the haters and they're always there and they're even like challenging them. I've never really been in that vibe, but I have had my fair share of like haters and pushback and mm -hmm. comments and, and little things. And I used to get very affected by it too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there'd be 200 comments of celebration and then one nasty comment. I'd be like, whoa, yeah. why is this one nasty comment here? This is so bad. I shouldn't yeah. have posted, you know, yeah. and I would get very affected. And, and I think now, um, I, I wouldn't even get affected if something was on there. Like I didn't even notice until a few days later after I posted. And then I was like, whoa, wait, there isn't one message mm. or one comment that's kind of a little off. And I was like, that's interesting. And I was like, okay, well, if there was, how would I be? And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't think I'd be triggered. I think that's the difference. Whereas in the past, I'd be like triggered. It would touch a part of me yeah. that's like, no, okay, I need to like prove myself or yes. this or that, right? And and I was like, okay, if that comment was there, I allowed myself to feel into it. And I was like, there's no trigger point kind of left on that, on that piece anymore, at least, yeah. that I'm aware of, you know? So I was like, well, I think if someone wrote something like that, I'd either just like bless them and be like, whatever, or I'd be like, yeah, and, and like, I'd even help them like reflect and see these parts and yeah. it, there wouldn't be an emotional charge from me. And in the past there would have been. So I think that's definitely a reflection of just some of my inner work and shifts because yeah, it was interesting. I, it's, I noticed it. <laughs> yeah, because it's a huge number. And I think that frequently it activates that sense of, but what about me? Yeah. It activates that sense of lack. And what was interesting, one of the women in my community, she was saying how she had been triggered by it, but she was able to own it immediately. She said, mm. because I desire to have that type of success. Yeah. And she hasn't up until this point allowed herself to align to the frequency of more, align mm. to the frequency of overflow. It has yeah. all been about need and the idea of going beyond what she personally needs mm. is still challenging. Yeah. And what was amazing was to be able to say that obviously you personally don't need that much and the mission and the vision and what you get, how that then circulates yeah. is just, doesn't even scratch the surface. Yeah. And so how big is the context? How big is the vision? Like, do you want to be one of those people who yeah. are changing the game? Yeah. So yeah. I'm interested, obviously you've tried to do a birthday transmission a couple of times. Twice now. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? It's so crazy. <laughs> I so I want to take advantage of the fact that you haven't been able to go live and get a little <laughs> bit of a scoop on um, what are you feeling into when it comes to the creation and how the vision is evolving. Yeah, it's definitely evolving. Um, you know, it's really cool. I went back and I watched a birthday celebration webinar thing that mm -hmm. I did. I think it must have been five, maybe even six years ago. And I watched it. I watched this version of me with like my shaved head. And I was like sitting on the ground. I was like yelling at the camera. <laughs> I was like so full on, you know, and I have so much love for that version yeah. also. But I was like, wow. And I, you know, I watched some parts of that. And, um, you know, this, this was five, six years ago. And my business was where it was. And I shared like this big, bold mission of wanting to help create over 50 millionaires. Mm. And that was for me, that was like, wow, like that would be like huge and that would be crazy. And simultaneously on that webinar, I shared um, that my bigger vision required in excess of a hundred million dollars mm. per year, right? And, and this was like five, six years mm. ago, you know? So even where we're at now with this 33, it's like, okay, we're, we're still like, these are baby steps <laughs> towards where we're actually going and yeah. where we're heading, you know? So I feel like we're, we're kind of opening this portal into this new cycle, um, with me and my life personally, and also with the vision and the impact. And, 
it, I was telling you last night when we were catching up, right? It, it feels like this doorway and this gateway is is opening to literally set up the next like six or seven years yeah. of my life and of my mission. And I'm not super clear on the details as mm-hmm. to how that looks. Vishen asked me this on stage in Berlin two weeks ago. He's like, you know, if you take yourself out like way into your future, like what does that look like? And I was like, I can't tell you mm. because I, I don't I don't know. And I know also not to get into the way of it's got to look like this and it's got to look like that. But I'm so clear of the frequency. Like I'm so clear of what it feels like, the energetics and the feeling and the state and the vibration and the feeling of embodying that feeling, like I'm so crystalline clear on that and I connect with that every day. And then if I if I hand the details over to God or the universe, I know they'll be taken care of and they're gonna be like even better than my mind would yeah. construct. So why would I try and construct it with my mind? <laughs> that would be crazy, yeah. right? And I feel that also takes a lot of trust and it takes a lot of surrender. Yes. You know, there was, um, It was just over a year ago and I had this big part within me wake up and I was like, it's time for like this mainstream code. There's Mm. this like mainstream code and this like template that's coming online and I could feel it and I could see it. And I went, I went to work, you know, and I started looking at it and here's what I didn't do. I didn't sit down and be like, okay, well, I'm going to speak on this stage and it has to be like this. And then this TV show, I didn't, I, I didn't do that. I was like, I just, I started feeling the feeling of what it would be like to start tapping into mainstream audiences because I received a very clear download that, okay, yeah, this is good. The coaching industry, the spiritual realms, like, yes, all of this. And kind of like, you know, our crew where they're like easy audiences that love us and like get it and like, cool. But there's like all these other people and all these other women in particular that are just living their life and they're completely unaware of business coaching or this or that. Like they're actually outside of these realms. And I started seeing like, okay, Regan, if you really want to go and to the next layer of these ripples of impact it's getting into these these new bubbles basically right and so i sat down and i did my energetic work and i basically built this template within my energetic field to hold these mainstream frequencies right Mm -hmm. and i was like yay this is so good and then i completely forgot about it (laughs) i was like yes and i probably worked on it for like a week and then i don't know like life got in the way i got distracted and i completely forgot and then it was probably just over four months ago, four and a half months ago, right before I left on this tour, I was sitting there at the nest in Costa Rica and it came back and I was like, oh, the mainstream thing. I I kind of sabotaged myself into disconnecting from it actually. I was like, oh my goodness, that was such an alive vision. I need to bring that back. And I started tuning into it again and I started working more intentionally with it. And the moment I did that, so many things started opening Mm. up like fast like magazine covers crazy interviews like and there's so much more like it's opened this wave of like things that i can't even tell you right now but they're coming over the next like few months and so it's this kind of solidification of that so yeah i feel i feel there's a deeper embodiment of that and um a big flow of that over the next year of like yeah rippling into these circles that are a little unknown right now but really exciting when we start tapping into them i feel that one of the biggest things i have learned from you is this it's surrender although i can i've got a long way to go when it comes to really truly surrendering (laughs) but trusting yeah trusting myself and trusting that I am fully supported is something that I first learned with you. And I remember the first three day event that I was doing and I was like getting all of my knickers in a twist. (laughs) And I remember you just saying something like, how do you want them to feel? And I said, I want them to feel loved. I want them to feel seen and I want them to feel the abundance. And it was those words all carry their own frequency. Yeah. And the invitation was to just tune into the frequency of those words. Mm -hmm. And I think that over the last three, four years that I've been understanding that at a deeper and deeper and deeper level. And I say this because some of the language that you use it sounds so magical. Like when you're like, I'm sitting there and I'm like building this new template in the energetic Mm. field. And I know that people are like, oh, how do I do that? (laughs) Yeah. And at the same time, you also said that it's not the details, Mm. it's 
the frequency. So for people that are just starting out, how do you recommend that they start to tap into the frequency of what it is that they want to create? Yeah, for sure. And this is also a big one because a lot of people say, well, I can't feel the feeling. I can't get into the frequency because I haven't manifested it. So I don't know what it feels like, right? So this is where you get to download the feeling from a version of you in your future that's already done it, that's Mm -hmm. already manifested it, that's already lived it. And okay, I'm just going to talk to like all the skeptics here, right? For, for the people who are like, but but what if, what if my higher self hasn't done it? What if I never yeah. do it in this life? Okay, well, you wouldn't have the desire to even do it or have it or be it if it wasn't in your future. Mm. You'd, you'd look at someone doing something and be like, okay, that's cool. I'm happy for them. You know, I see like a, a Ferrari race car driver winning in his race and I'm like, that's really cool. And I have zero desire to go and yeah. learn how to drive a Ferrari and run it around a track. But that's awesome that that guy's like the best Mm. in the world. But there's no desire in me. So chances are my future self in this lifetime probably isn't going to do that. And that's also okay. But if you watch someone do something on a stage on the internet and you're like, Mm. and there's a part of you that's either triggered or inspired, which is still inspiration if there's a trigger, Mm. (laughs) right? And and you have that piece, it simply means there's a part of you waking up to that because you've already done it in your future somewhere, right? So if we remember that time is a construct and we can tap into a higher version of ourselves that's already done that at any moment. Yes, there's meditations and things you can do to do that, but you don't even need to. Mm. You can literally close your eyes and be like, I choose to connect with the highest version of me that's already manifested X. One thought away, Mm. like super simple. You do not need to complicate this. And then when you have that connection point, you literally ask yourself, what would it feel like if I had already manifested this now? Mm. What would it feel like if I was making this money? What would it feel like if my business was here? What would it feel like if I ran that event and and I finished in this way or if I spoke on the stage? You, You feel into the feeling and the minute you start feeling the feeling and you may not feel it for a little bit, you may have to like sit with it, do it again the next day, do it again. The minute you feel it, you get on to that feeling and you tell yourself, okay, double that feeling, triple mm-hmm. that feeling, make it stronger, turn it up. You can see a dial if you want and like crank the feeling up until it starts getting stronger and stronger. And I call this energetic conditioning. It's like yeah. working out. It's like going to a gym. People go to a gym once and you expect to be like a bodybuilder at the end. Like, no, you're probably going to be like, that was hard. I'm sore. I don't know if I want to go back. Like you, you keep going, <laughs> you go again and then again and again, and eventually you get stronger and it might take some time, but it's the same with the energetics, you know? Why do you think that people don't want to believe that? Believe that it can be that simple as just being able to identify the feeling and that be an opening for you and opening for everything that you want. Why do people not want to believe it? Because confusion is one of the greatest, sneakiest self-sabotage methods. Mm. The the more that I come back to simplicity in my life, the easier it gets. And many people run a story that the more successful you get or the more money you make or the more your business grows, it's going to get more and more complicated. Well, not necessarily. If you choose that, it gets to be more and more simple and it gets to actually be easier and easier than so it shall be. But one of the greatest self-sabotage mechanisms is like, okay, let's make this hard. Let's make this confusing. Let's spin the mind in a thousand ways so the mind figures it out. But you can't figure out a lot of this stuff through the mind. Mm. You know, the mind's a, a processing system, but it's not... God is <laughs> not the ultimate creator. So it throws this program in there in order to attempt to keep you in your comfort zone. Mm. So if you can see this and go like, oh, I'm making this sound hard or I'm making this feel complicated or I'm saying, oh, it can't be that simple. Just notice that that's a program. Yes. It's a program and you just get to update the computer software and be like, okay, what if it was this simple? What if it was this easy? What, what if I did get to tap into these things in a way where it is so simple? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think also part of it, at least when you're in the entrepreneurial world as well, is that marketeers like to have their 15,000 step plan for you to have to buy into. Of course. Because that <laughs> that generates money. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's the reason why I missed out step 12,355. Yeah. And you can have it for just 199. And I think that feeds into the idea that it has to be complicated or this is the reason that I can't quite work it out. It's because it's too complicated for my yeah. for my mind. It's the same with spirituality. If someone's yeah. explaining a spiritual concept and they're making it super complicated, they probably completely miss the point. Because mm. when you get to the core essence of all of it, it's actually very simple. It's always through the heart. It's not 
12,000 steps. It's probably one, two or three. <laughs> like, yeah. It's simple and it gets to be easy. But yeah, yeah we, we create these spins. And you're right, like a lot of like online marketers especially create these spins of like, oh, look how complicated it is. That means it's more valuable. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> You've heard it here first. If it's more complicated, it's usually less valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Tell me, what have you found challenging over the last year? Yeah, there's been a few challenges for sure. Um, I've definitely, I've hit these moments where it's been uncomfortable. It's felt almost like I'm on the edge of this breakthrough, mm -hmm. you know, on the edge of this like limit, the edge of this cap. And it's felt like not quite sure what it is, but it's like, it feels like everything wants to go, which I feel it is right now actually in this moment. But if we go back like four or five months, it felt like I could feel it all coming it was almost frustration of like, why isn't it here now? Yeah. And then what else do I need to do? And then I remember there's nothing to do and there's everything to be. So then I go back to that and <laughs> it, it, it felt, yeah, this like, this like inner frustration. Yeah. And I think that's one of the pieces I've really, I've really got to, I've had to look at, you know, I've had the gift to look at this year of, of really wanting things to happen yesterday mm. and then realizing like, okay, cool. Like, okay, even if it happens in one or two months, it's going to be okay. It's still amazing. It's still good, you know, yeah. but like, yeah, just the ego getting in the way and like wanting to control the timelines. I think that that is probably the hardest thing for, certainly for me, but also many people. And mm -hmm. that is when you're not actually doing what it is you feel that you should be doing, but for some people, they believe that they don't know what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. Do you do you believe it's possible to not know what you want? You know, when you ask some people like, what's the dream, what's the vision? And they say, I don't know. Yeah. Do you think that that, I, I kind of believe that everybody knows, but sometimes they're afraid to say in case it doesn't happen. Yeah, I think there's two things. I think there's, I've been in that place a lot where I was like, I don't know. Like when I started my journey, I was like, what's your big dream? And I was like, blank. Okay. Literally blank. And it was weird because I always felt like I was born for more. I always felt mm -hmm. like I was here to do something big, but get me to define that or even ask for what I want in my life, blank. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, why is there this blank? This is weird. And and for me, like there was a lot of conditioning around like, you know, at school, I was constantly told to stop daydreaming and like, mm -hmm. you know, focus on this thing that you don't even like doing in school. And I'd be like wanting to like be out in like my vision and my other dimensions and my dreaming. And it was always like cut, you know? So for me, it was giving myself permission to dream again, you know, and, mm -hmm. and figuring out like, oh, I have a lot of these constructs and fears and whatever, like blocking that to clear that. So there's that side of things. And then there's also the side of things where you might be like, well, I don't know what this vision looks like, but I'm like we talked about, mm -hmm. but I'm so crystal clear on the frequency and that's different. Yeah. You know, that that's a, it's a very like high level kind of vibe of being energetically clear, but surrendered to the how and yes. surrendered to the details, which is different to being like, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So the timeline piece, I think, shows up for a lot of people when they're worried about time running out. Mm. Like, I'm already 40 or I'm already 35 and I thought I was going to be here. Or, I'm already 50 and I thought I was going to be there. Time is moving more quickly and I'm not sure how to hold it or how to make something happen. What do you say to those people? Stop trying to hold it. <laughs> Stop trying to make something happen. Like it's it's important in those moments to zoom out and remember like we're timeless at the end of the day. Mm. We're infinite beings, you know? And when we really get to the higher perspective of that and, and how many, yes, we have this lifetime, but also like how many like different iterations of ourself multi-dimensionally there are. Like this is such a, this is such a little drop in a, in a huge ocean, mm. right? It, it really is. So you can't be in expansion and contraction at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so if you're contracting around time, then you're blocking anything that's actually coming in. Mm -hmm. you're, you're actually stopping the flow of receiving. You're stopping the flow of, of everything wanting to manifest in your life. So I think it's um, a gift to even see that 
and be like, oh, I'm in contraction right now with time. I'm trying to control time. Yes, you could. There's a difference between being intentional and say, I'd like this to happen on or before a month from now yeah. versus, oh my God, it has to because the world's going to end if it doesn't and, da, 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 and time's running out. Like that's a whole different vibe, you know? Yeah. So if you can see that contraction and see that relationship to time, you can go, oh, hang on. I can actually change this because time doesn't control us. We're in control of our relationship to time. Yeah. And time is actually a construct that we can play with. It's actually very malleable when you get into it. There's, you know this, Susie, with coming to Peru and working mm. deeply with Tree of Light. Like you sit there in a ceremony and you're like, has this been an hour? Yeah. Has this been 10 years? Like oh, yeah. Yeah. you step out of the time matrix, yeah. you know, when you're working in yes. this way where you realize like, you're infinite and actually time is just, we, we need time. Time's a great thing. We need it to actually process our reality in yeah. different layers through this lifetime. So it's a great thing. It's a tool, but it's not a great tool when we give our power away to it. Yes. When we run stories saying time is running out. I never have enough time. There's never enough time to do the things that I love. I never have enough time for my business. Well, then so it shall be, you yeah. know, or you can get all of that out and look at it and be like, okay, that's a terrible relationship to time. Let me change that, right? What if you always had more than enough time? Yeah. What if you always had the time to do the things that you love? What if time was on your side? What if time was one of the greatest tools of manifestation that you had? And this is not something I was brought up with. Like I've conditioned myself from the inside out to have the most epic relationship with mm -hmm. time. And, and to the point where I was like, I love time. And you see me, I live my best life. Like I have so much going on. I have multiple different companies. I have yeah. an amazing relationship. I've basically raised a child for the last six years. Yeah. Like, you know, this is a lot going on. And I still get my massages and I still yes. do my thing. And I slept till 9 a.m. today because we were out till 1 a.m. Yeah. last night. And like, <laughs> you know, I do the things I love to do. And yeah. there's always time for all of it. And if I ever feel like oh, there's not enough, I'm like, okay, that's, that's my relationship right now. And I see that as a moment to recalibrate that. Yeah. How much of the fact that you get so much in and done comes from the fact that you also allow yourself to be wildly supported. Yeah, it's a lot also. Yeah. And that's the thing, often people trip with that support piece, yeah. even with their team and their business, and, and they don't grow their team in a certain way where they can actually fully leverage their time and their support because they're still holding on to this construct that they have to do it all themselves and yeah. there's not enough time. And that, all of that is all kind of married together. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, for sure, a lot of it. And I'm I'm also very aware of it and I'm very grateful for it. And I put a lot of like intentional gratitude on that. And I know if I'm like, okay, well, we have like 50 odd people in the team right now and they're all working roughly eight hours a day. Like that's 50 of me yes. times by eight hours a day. So every hour that's like, I don't even know like how many of my hours are going into that. Like, yeah. that's amazing. And then when you see time as a resource, you're like, okay, cool. Well, time's just another resource. I have like the resource of money. I have the resource of time. I have the resource of my own energy. I, I have all these different ways that I can resource into my life and allocate resources in my life. So someone who's like doing everything themselves is generally resourcing all of their own time, yes. but not leverage time. Yeah. So you can start seeing these as like, it's a game, you know, and you take these resources and you allocate them in different ways and you have a lot of gratitude for that. But often that can't even be created as a structure unless the the person leading the show has a really great relationship with time and they've worked on that and, and they're, they honor time as well. It's not about like, screw you time, I'm gonna hack the system, you're the worst thing ever. No, time is amazing. It's such yeah. a valuable resource. And in our human construct, yeah, we're never gonna get it back. And there is an end point for yeah. all of us in this realm reality, right? So when you also have a deep honoring and gratitude with it, it's a, such a valuable resource. Yeah. For me, it's more valuable than money. 100% because mm -hmm. it's the only truly finite resource. Yep. And so that investment of how do I feel today? I want to be the shiniest, best version of myself. How do I feel today? What do I want to do with today? Yeah. How do I want to be in today? All of that, it changes your experience of life yeah. in the best possible way. I've had a really interesting thing with time, like literally this week. Mm -hmm. So it's felt so expanded. Like on Wednesday, it could have almost been Saturday for the amount of like stuff <laughs> yeah. and conversations and richness. Richness, yeah. Yeah. It was really like, wow, it's only the beginning of the week. And that 
that's quite different for me because usually it feels like time is accelerating mm. and although we're fitting a lot in and it gets to be exciting and I get to really be mindful about I'm not available for overwhelm mm. like I've got everything that I'm asking for so great but it still feels a little bit like brrr. yeah it's, it's beautiful to have this expanded experience yeah do you have any thoughts on that yeah i have thoughts on that and um i think a lot of people feel like time is speeding up yeah right like time is accelerating i heard you say that and it's interesting because my perception of this is actually time is not time time is the same yeah. <laughs> it's actually you know it's it's in the same metric system effectively it's, yes. it's actually not changing however what is changing is our ascension acceleration is changing and mm. the energy that's actually coming through onto this planet through the plasma light and through all of us is increasing and so that's what we're feeling we're actually processing more of our divinity every hour every day every minute and that data is coming through at higher rates that's what we're feeling and that's why it feels like oh my god time is speeding up but it's important to separate this and be like no time is not speeding up time is the constant it's the measure and our ascension is actually speeding up mm. the process that we're embodying our divinity and the true essence of who we are and our capacity to actually interpret that information and process it and embody it if we're doing this work, mm -hmm. like everyone listening here is, it is, is actually increasing, but that's the acceleration we feel. And it's nice for the mind to see those two differences and be like, oh, it's not that time's racing away from me. No, time's already there. What I'm feeling is like, whoa, I, I get to process even more of me every mm -hmm. single day. That's awesome. When I talk about being more of myself, I think about myself being at the center of the universe uh -huh. and I am creating it all. And there's this recognition that God is within me mm. and I am, I am source. But even saying that actually feels a little bit, it feels a little bit controversial to actually say that. And I'm just curious when you talk about being your multidimensional self, do you see yourself as source, the creator? Like that's you being able to tap into more of that universal intelligence, which is you. There's no separation between God, the universe, yourself and everything yeah. that's created. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't feel there's any separation there. The only separation is an illusion that we create through the mind, through the construct of the ego. And um, we also need a little bit of that illusion of separation to actually be here in this realm, because otherwise we'd all just be God. Like, as God, as the universe, we'd all just be bubbles of light, basically. Yeah. But we're not. We have personalities. We have names. We have identities. We have, like, unique pathways and missions that we've come here to complete. So we actually need that in order to anchor the uniqueness of it. But at the core essence of all of it, I believe that we're effectively consciousness experiencing itself yeah. through this realm to learn more about itself. And you can call consciousness God or the universe or great spirit or source or whatever label you like. But yeah, we're consciousness experiencing ourselves in order to eventually return back with a higher intelligence and wisdom is why i believe we're here on this planet to also unlock the lessons yeah. to live our lives not just like survive our lives and like live in our comfort zone and not unlock any lessons like we're here to live you yeah. know and those lessons don't have to mean that you have to go through crazy challenges and so much pain maybe mm -hmm. uh, or maybe not maybe you can unlock things through pleasure also and through having a higher wiser intelligence and be like oh i was about to step left oh i'm so happy i didn't okay good lesson and then just step right you know like there's there's also different ways to navigate but i feel a lot of it is is that it's we're consciousness experiencing itself in this journey is the mission then just to remember that like the more we can remember the higher the ascension yeah and i think the mission ultimately is to be like i said in the beginning the best version of ourselves mm. i think that's really it like the core of it and then it's dressed up with you know different purposes mm. right the mission is the core same mission ultimately, I think, for every human here to be the best version of you and unlock these pieces along the way. And and I know that when you do that, you shift and elevate your field, which is connected. There's no separation. You shift and elevate the whole field of humanity. Mm. So the more people that are doing this work, we also, you know, support the overall ascension on this planet. Um, 
but yeah, I feel it comes back to that. And then there's, there's like, then there's the personal purpose layers, which is a little different to the planetary and ascension mission. So I feel we're all connected into that same mission if we're choosing to connect to the light and be here for, you know, good, powerful reasons. And then we have these unique purposes and that's where like the, the personality comes in and the identity and the multiple purposes, like the purpose of this and the purpose of that. But it, it all falls back into this like core mission of experiencing ourselves. What about the idea of karma and coming back in to the world with like the remnants of previous lessons that either have or haven't been learned? Do you believe that? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think there definitely that does play out in our lives. And I think there's also, again, like how we choose to live if we get stuck in suffering and struggle and things like that. I think that's also a choice, right? So there are ways, for example, where you can go in and start to just clear karma from other lifetimes, especially if you feel like things are playing out in your life and you're like, whoa, and when you tune into it, it's like, it feels like this is like old. This is yeah. like other lifetime, like it's from that frequency. And um, you can go in. It doesn't mean you have to then like suffer and like pay the price for all the lessons. I feel that's an old construct. Yeah. But sometimes there is healing work to be done. And sometimes there are things to be learned where, which could be going into a meditation and be like, whoa, I'm getting this feeling like in this past life, I really betrayed this person. Yeah. Okay. I ask forgiveness for that. I'm sorry. I've learned my lesson. And you integrate that. Like, it doesn't mean you then have to go and be betrayed and then suffer the feeling of betrayal. Like maybe, or the higher consciousness is like, okay, let me go in, find the karma, unlock the lesson, integrate it, take it forward. Like that's also an option. <laughs> I think again, the way that you say it makes it sound so simple. Yes, and I is. see, <laughs> <laughs> I see so many people looping, especially like intergenerational trauma, past karmas, past life karmas. I've been a witch. I've been burned. Yeah, those. Um, um, beliefs mm -hmm. are really helpful when it comes to keeping people stuck. Yeah. And the idea that you can, that it is possible to go into yourself through meditation and use your intention to clear the past energies. I feel that so many people are still, no, I'm not going to accept that. Yeah. And that's the choice. You know, are you more committed to suffering and looping in your stories or are you more committed to finding an easy way to do the work? <laughs> you know, yeah. this is also why plant medicine is really powerful too. Yes. Because it, I, as you know, it really helps people when it's done in the right way, in the right environments, go beyond those stories yeah. and beyond the mind that can be so strong and like, no, that's too simple. That's impossible. You know, I, I, I was burned 20 times. So how am I going to like not be burned if I do a Facebook live, you know, and yeah. these stories play out in a very real way. But the medicine can come in through a ceremonial space and, and go beyond the mind and go straight into the acceleration of that clearing, of that healing, of those lessons. And that's why like one ceremony can feel like 20 years of psychotherapy and deep work yeah. because it's an accelerator, you know. You were saying last night that you were feeling the nudge for more ceremonial action. Yeah. And I'm curious, can you share with us how you use plant medicine? Yeah. Um, I use it in a very deep and intentional way. And like most things in my life, I'm either fully in and immersed in it or I'm not at mm. all. So for me personally, I'm not really someone who's like microdosing every day mm. and trying these things and going to a hundred ceremonies and Friday night ayahuasca. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people do, but like, it's just not my vibe. Yeah. I don't feel it's of service. And so what works really well for me is once a year, mm. super deep, fully intentional, done the right way with the right shamans, connecting in with the right ancestral lineage, the right galactic lineage. There's a mm. lot of the right medicine. There's a lot of factors that come into that. And then prepping for that mm. and doing a dieta for that and making sure 
every layer of my being is aligned to going and doing that work. So not just like, okay, cool, I'm going to take the substance. That's great. It's going to accelerate my mind. Mm. Okay, well, how am I going to prepare my physical body? Because if yeah. I can't stabilize the new frequencies, they're not going to embody. It's yeah. kind of obvious and simple, but people don't think about it like this. Okay, how do I get to now prepare my emotional body? Because if that's not clear, then I'm not going to stabilize the new frequencies. My mental body, this is that, right? So all of it's important. So for me, it's like once a year, deep dive, we go to Peru, we have our crew. We also then, you know, run our retreat there, which you have come to and you're coming back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited for. <laughs> um, but yeah, we always go early and we always do our personal work. And then you also see like we're then in a space in the retreat where we're with the medicine and with all of you, we're very present and holding space and working with everyone, but we're also in our own personal work, but not so deep that we're like lying on the ground and yeah. <laughs> we can't help anybody. <laughs> right. We're not wildly purging being like, no, what's going exactly, on? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah. And Wamp is the same as well. You know, for us, it's, it's once a year, it's deep work. It's then deep integration after that work, yes. but it's not like dipping in and out of it and this and that. And, and I've done that over the years. I've done the dip in and out and the microdosing and the, the pieces. And um, I don't feel it's of the highest service to me. I feel it's like the deep dive and then the integration. What does the integration look like? I'm, I'm assuming that it's different each time. So maybe yeah. the last time. Yeah, it's different each time. It, it's just being really, really present to what is looking to integrate through mm. because I feel you can still go and sit in ceremonies and work with medicine and then not respect the integration process. Yeah. And then you're only getting maybe like 20% of the benefits from yeah. it, really. We've seen people do this. We've seen people not respect the integration through the physical body and we tell them after the Peru retreat, we're like, hey, it's really important for the next few weeks that you eat this, this, and this, and you don't eat this. And we've mm -hmm. seen people literally go and eat the complete opposite 24 hours after this retreat and then call us, I'm vomiting, I'm sick. And then we're like, well, <laughs> we told <Yeah>. you <laughs> what to do and what not to do, but it's important. It's also important like with your energetics as well. Like, you know, you probably don't want to go into a crowded space, a huge event or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. unless you really are like, in your mastery, you know, someone yeah. like you, where you're like, okay, cool, I can handle this, like bubble up, here we go. But even then it's hard work. Well, I remember flying back to Heathrow. Yeah. And it was at the time where there was, there was just a huge, it was a mess. Yeah. And there were people arguing and there were people fighting. And I remember being in the queue because I couldn't <laughs> find my bag. Yeah. And this woman was having this really tough discussion with one of the staff from BA. And I just, I was crying. Yeah, yeah. Like I just felt it all. Mm -hmm. I was so open yeah. after that experience. Yeah. It was, and it was really, I remember messaging you going, oh help. <laughs> yeah, help. I'm in the airport and I'm crying. Like what's wrong with me? Oh, it's fine, it's normal. Keep breathing. <laughs> You're very open right now. <laughs> yeah. It was, Peru was really quite, extraordinary and again i feel like the bar has been set way too high now i can't i can't imagine <laughs> sitting with anybody else because yeah. everything about the experience was so exquisite mm. like the retreat center magical fairyland i remember yeah. us all walking in <laughs> and being like everywhere <laughs> Where are we? Am I in a fragment of my own imagination? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. No, it was so beautiful. And then yeah. the people, yeah. the the constellation that was created mm -hmm. and attracted in was just so exquisite. I remember feeling like, though, am I doing it right? Because mm. my experience was so... It was really beautiful actually for the full 10 days. And I mm. think that I had been expecting to be taken to the deepest, darkest depths. Yeah. And actually when I did have challenging moments, I was just able to, to work with it. And you've said this many times. Mm -hmm. And I think that when I was first expecting to have the experience that I would lose my mind. Mm -hmm because I have um, journeyed with Bufo and that yeah. experience, you do lose your mind. Yeah. And so I wasn't really expecting to be lucid at all or in con 
in control. Yeah. And I think that that was the beautiful thing is that, well, one, I wasn't in control, but my mind was still present. So I was able to notice when I wanted to hold on mm -hmm. and when I wanted to grip. Yeah. And I was able to release. Mm -hmm. And whenever I speak to people about my experience, I'm like, if I could tell you one thing, it would be don't try to hold on. The moment yeah. that you go into resistance is the moment that everything just- Becomes hard. Becomes hard. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the pace of releasing was very, very quick for me. Yeah. And I think that that really supported me in having quite an exquisite experience. Yeah, you did amazing. And, and I think a big part of that was because you were so surrendered if people come into these spaces and they're struggling a lot, it is because they're trying to control it. Yeah. You know, and I think these plants are master teachers of one of the biggest unlocks, which is surrender, you know, and it's like, it's not just surrender like, oh yeah, okay, I choose to surrender with the mind. It's actually surrendering. <laughs> yeah. Physically, emotionally, like everything out on the table, like, okay, I surrender, I'm here, show me, I'm ready. Yeah. And any moments that you're not fully in that, you can get your ass kicked, you know, with these medicines. <laughs> and I remember at the end of the, uh, the end of the retreat, everybody was like, and what does this mean? And what does that mean? And I've taken these notes and I've taken that and I've taken this. And what does this mean? And I think I'm gonna like run away and do this. And, and I remember you and one power were like, and Stop. breathe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, give yourself a day to leave yeah and i made everyone promise not to make any life-changing decisions for the next two weeks because i'm like you're integrating yeah you're still actually processing all the layers of of these experiences and frequencies and i've had things happen like nine months or even a year and a half after a ceremony and i've been like oh, oh. i saw this in a ceremony oh yeah right oh yeah that yeah. happened and i kind of forgot about it and yes. now it's like and it's almost like you have these relapses where you're in your life and you're living it and you're like i feel like i've lived this and you're like oh, i lived this in a ceremony but it's happening later because that's when you were ready to actually embody it yes. you know so again it's this time thing of the multi-dimensional time and the time kind of flipping around and spinning and like all of this where you can come out of the story and be like oh wow like that's really magical but sometimes it doesn't all happen a day after the retreat. <laughs> yeah. And I think being able to release that expectation, I remember sharing with my community saying that it was incredible, but whether it will be life-changing will happen in the integration. Yeah, of course. And now I can honestly say that my life has changed so yeah. much. <laughs> like it is insane in the most beautiful way and that was a huge part like that was a huge choice point for okay who do you want to be now mm -hmm. what are you leaning into now what are you leaning back from because i feel that this whole year has been about surrender yeah this whole year has been about not pushing even though the mind has wanted to be like okay, you need to do this, or this should be looking like that now. Yeah. This should, I've released so many shoulds mm. this year. And a big part of that was having to release and surrender and accept everything that was presented to me yeah. in Peru. That's so good. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah. And then we did infusion. And then we did infusion. <laughs> Which was also, Totally Inc different. Totally, totally yeah. different. Totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. And the way that you describe it is the it's the mixing of the ancient wisdom, so the plant medicine and the tech and yeah. the quantum tech. Yeah. You've created this really, really incredible life where work does feel like play. Yeah. I stopped working a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. everything feels so, uh, like you would do this for, for free. Yeah. When did you make the decision that you were allowed to live that life? I think I chose that pretty consciously and intentionally. When was this? Maybe 
maybe like nine years ago, Mm -hmm. a while ago. And I chose this because, yeah, it was about nine years ago that I created my first million dollar year. But like this was before I was online, right? So this is, no, nearly, yeah, 10, 10 years ago because I was 23. Can we just take a minute? (laughs) Like aside from the fact that you were 23 and just made a million, which is also in and of itself amazing, (laughs) 10 years later, like if someone had said to you, Within a decade, yeah, you will have a plus thirty-three million <laughs> pound year. <laughs> what would you have said? I wouldn't have believed that. No. At that point. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. Like again, <laughs> talking about timelines. Yeah, that's not normal. <laughs> let's make it normal. <laughs> yeah, let's make it normal. Let's normalize it. <laughs> let's normalize yeah. it. I know. I know. Yeah. And it's part of the time thing. The time's such a blur. I really have to like search. You saw me like searching for the time stamps. I'm like the million (laughs) dollars. Yeah. So I remember um, I did this first million dollars. I wasn't online at all. I created this offline um, speaking and coaching business in Australia and New Zealand. I was running everything through meetup.com. So Mm -hmm. I I almost had no expenses because I was like hosting these meetup groups for free and then bringing them into these workshops. And um, I did this, but I did it in a way where I was so stressed out. Mm. I was sleeping like three hours a night. I was super crazy. I had no team. Everything was built around me and Mm. reliant on me. And I had this moment where I wanted to actually go to Bali with some friends. And I was like, I I can't. It's irresponsible for me to leave. Everything will stop, you know. And I just remember looking at this and I was like, there's got to be a different way. And I looked at my life and I remember doing this analysis where I looked at like my day, my day to day day. And I was like, how many things do I do every day that I actually love? And I was like, maybe an hour or two. I was like, that sucks. <laughs> I was like, if this is what the rest of my life looks like, just cause I'm going to be making money. I don't know if I want to sign up for this. Yeah. So I had a choice to either just remove myself and disconnect and be like, Meh, I don't want to do that. Or choose to work with money in a completely different way. Mm. And so it was It was then I made that choice. I was like, okay, I am only gonna do what I love each and every single day. And there was a transition in that, obviously. I then walked away from that company and then I was, I had this time in Bali and I completely disconnected and whatever. And then I, you know, started Regan Hillier International, which you see today and other ventures. But I remember sitting down specifically and I was like, okay, I'm going to write out and anyone can do this. I still get people to do this. You can write out everything you're doing in your life and in your business. And I say life and business because if you're cleaning the house and you don't like cleaning the house, you write it down. Mm -hmm. If you're like walking the dogs and you actually don't enjoy it, write it down. Like you write out everything you're doing every day, life and business. And then I want you to circle the things that you just really don't enjoy. And for many people, that's going to be like a lot of circles, right? I then want you to star anything on that list um, that you're not good at as well. Yes. I was like creating payment pages and click funnels myself. And like, this is not your zone of genius. No, yeah. it's not a genius <laughs> at all. And I was like designing my own like little banners for the graphics yeah. for me. I was doing everything, yeah. everything. Right. And so then I created this list and it was full of circles and stars. And I was like, whoa, like, okay. And then one by one, I just committed to delegating them and figuring out how do I build a team and how do I have some support just for this thing, right? Until eventually you're like you write down everything you're doing in your life and you're like oh this is fun this is great <laughs> like and, and there are some things in my team where they're like we can do that for you and i'm like no i want to do it i like it and they're like okay weirdo you keep doing it then yeah. like <laughs> right so you can hang on to the things you love but anything that you don't love and you're not good at gets to go what would you say to the people that are listening to this and are like okay but you decided that after you'd made your first million I'm still on like wanting to get to 5k a month. Yeah, I do can't. It now. Do it now. You do it now. Do it now. <laughs> Please do it now. So, okay, this is a good example. When I started out online, I started out completely fresh. I didn't have any social media. I <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I knew nothing about like how to craft an online course or like I was completely like fresh baby, had no idea, right? And I started that online company and I grew it to its first million dollars in eight months. 
right? And this was not with a pre-existing audience. This wasn't with like crazy investment that I went and took and put into Facebook ads. I did it totally organically. And when I hit that million dollar mark in eight months time, I had less than 2000 followers on my Facebook. I didn't even have an Instagram page. I had an email list of like 800 people that I'd built up over that year. Like that's it, you know? Also, there is a little story about the fact that you didn't have any money in the bank account when no. you first started that No, I business. didn't. I was like paying off all these debts and like I'd invested so much in coaching and mentoring and I had personal loans and credit cards and um, my loan from university, like just all this crap. Yeah. So no, it, it wasn't like, oh, this millionaire came online and did this. I was like starting again, <laughs> starting fresh, starting yeah. from zero. But I did it in a way where I was like, I got to get this list right because I'm doing it on my terms this time and I'm not going to do it in a way where I'm burnt out and I'm exhausted and I hate what I'm doing every day. So I, I did it that way. And, and it's so possible. Like even when we're at that million dollar mark in eight months, I think I had 14 members, you know, what was it? I feel like you had to have a specific relationship with money even back then in order to have allowed that amount in, in yeah. that period of time. Mm -hmm. What was the money work and the relationship that you had been formulating before you started in the online world to help that. Yeah, I was so crystal clear about it. And I chose it every day, like there was no other option. Like I would literally sit down and write out like, okay, this is gonna be a million dollar brand within a year. Oh. Oh, I chose that over and over again. I declared that every single day. I breathed that, it was my center point. Uh, yes, also obviously like the impact, the service, the contribution, all the things that flow into that, but the money piece, I was so clear, I was so specific, I was so precise, my energy was so behind it and I had no other, there was no other option. It wasn't like an energy of like, oh, well that'd be nice or like, let's see, or like it could be in a few, I was like, that's, that's done, that's it. That, and so when it happened in eight months, I was like, yay, <laughs> that's awesome and I chose that. That's awesome. And that feels very normal because I've been in this energy like from the get go, from the minute, from the, the second I set up like the first Stripe account and the first PayPal, I was like, okay, a year from now, these are going to be the numbers. Like, I was so clear. Is that because that's what you'd come back from? So there was no way that you were willing to start another company and it be turning over less. Was that the mindset that you went into it with? I think that was part of it. I think it was part of it for sure. I, I think um, I think definitely once you've created something in your life, the all the circumstances can change, but you have a deep knowing that you're just going to do it again. Sure. You know, and um, you know, it was the same the first time around with the offline business as well. I was like super, super, super clear. It didn't happen by like accident. I wasn't like, oh, that's so random. That have I was I was really really crystal clear that that's what was happening. Here's the thing, something that you just said, which I think is really, really important. What you just said is that once you've done it once, you have this deep, deep knowing that you can do it again. I think some people forget that yeah, because they true. have their big peaks and then they go into fear and contraction that it's never gonna happen again. And something something stops or something breaks. What's mm. your What's your thoughts on that? I think it's a self-sabotage pattern mm -hmm. for sure. And um, I think when that happens, people just haven't stabilized fully yeah. the energetics of that amount of money. There's a difference between, okay, okay, I'm gonna get to this money goal and hit it versus- I'm a match for this. I'm a match for this constantly, Yeah, minimum every month. And there's no going back because I'm only going forward. So there's no other option, <laughs> right? <laughs> And it's it's having your energy in that place. Um, because yeah, I've seen that a lot with people too. And they like peak and hit this like, yeah, and then crash. Yeah. And it's like, well, the crash isn't necessary. It's it's also, I feel it's a big um, like imprint in society too. Yes. Like we're often told, oh, the highs and the lows. And it's, it's impossible to always be making more money than last month. Well, that's not true. Like you can choose that everything can compound and it can build and it can yeah. accelerate. Like that's also a choice, you know? It's a very common one that you have to contract after there's been an expansion. Yeah. And your the intention is you just don't contract as much um, as where you were before, but there should always be yeah. a contraction and expansion. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like if you know, like let's say you're hitting 10K for the first time, your first 10K month, and you know you're about to hit that, like you shouldn't be 
focused on that energy so much of 10k you should be like in the 15k you should yeah. be in the 20 you should be like doing all your work to stabilize that and then when you're in the 20 you should be stabilizing the 50 and like you know it's like you yeah. always need to be those those few steps ahead and doing that work and seeing what the resistance is and clearing that and stabilizing that so that when you're there you're like well of course it'd be at 10k because that's my stepping stone into my next month of 30 or whatever it is you know you don't sound like you had much guilt or shame that you were carrying with you in relation to money when you started your business. Does that does that feel true? Um, I think it was like dependent on what environments I was in. Okay. So if I walked into a business event and people were talking about money, I wouldn't have too much of a problem mm -hmm. sharing. Like I just did this, but if I was sitting with my family then I'd be like doing everything to avoid the conversation. <laughs> sure. So yeah, I think it was like dependent on environments. So it was there. It just showed up in different ways for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How did you move beyond the guilt and the shame with your family? Um, it was a big one. You know, I realized pretty early on that I was running a big program in an attempt to stay in connection with my family. Yes. And so I was running a story saying basically like, you can stay in connection um, or you can make money and break the connection. Yes. And you have to choose. And I was like, I don't want to break the connection. <laughs> um, so I think, I think you, I think you heard me say this on a training once, but there was a moment years and years ago where I was like capping out at a certain amount of money per month. And no matter what I did internally or externally, I just couldn't seem to break through mm -hmm. that cap. And I was like, this is so crazy. And I was in like a internal exploration of this and my dad's face just kept coming. And I was like, what mm -hmm. is this? Like, what does this have to do with my dad? And then it, I rang him and I was like, dad, what's like, cause my dad, you know, he's run his own like company his whole life mm -hmm. and very much highs and lows, mm -hmm. peaks and troughs, ups and downs, huge years. And then like, I don't know if we can buy food, like, extremes you yeah. know full extremes and i said to him i was like what's the most amount of money you've ever made in a month in your company and he told me and it was exactly what mm. i was capping at almost to the dollar and i was like thank you very much and he's like why and i was like nah no worries i just <laughs> i need to process mm. this and so then i went into that and i was like okay I'm like my field, my energetics are unconsciously trying to stay in connection with his yeah and then i realized okay, if I choose to actually disconnect and generate more money, does that break the connection or does that maybe bring up his stuff potentially to mm. look at as a father or feeling like he's failed for the family or mm. whatever his story is? And then I was like, whatever that is, that's his story. Yeah, That's not my story to try and like hold. And actually I'm doing him a disservice if I'm nurturing that story. So I chose to actually disconnect from that while still keeping my heart connection with him specifically and the rest of my family. And then we saw the money like move like really, really, really fast. And it was really hard for him. My like nightmare of like, oh my God, it's gonna affect him really badly happened mm -hmm. as well. And I remember flying my parents to Bali first class and I told my mom and she's like, okay, but you can't tell your father it's first class. And I'm like, well, he's going to have to get on the plane. She's like, yeah, but he won't even go to the airport if he sees the ticket. Wow. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to send you the ticket. So like my mom's the opposite. She's yes. like, of course it's first class, right? Like when is the next trip? And so, <laughs> <laughs> and my dad's having a meltdown, a full meltdown. <laughs> and, um, and so she gets to the airport and they're checking in. The lady's like first class. And my dad's like, what? And the lady's like, yeah, yeah, you, you have first class two tickets. My mom's like, yes. And my dad's like no <laughs> and and then he's like arguing with the girl to put him in economy wow and wow my mom's like going crazy like shut up yeah. <laughs> and like grabs the tickets grabs the bag storms on my dad's like there must be a mistake and she's like no your daughter has done this for us like just accept it and he mom said like on the plane he was like super tight super tense like couldn't deal with it like finally by the end of the eight hour trip he like started to relax like right at the end <laughs> he gets off the plane i meet them in the bali villa my mom's like hello darling like super happy my dad's like first thing he can't even say hello he's like why did you book those plane tickets wow. like he's freaking out and i was like dad i was like i want you to receive i said you're my father and you're my family and I only travel first class now. And this is yeah. this was still pretty new for me at that time too. And I was like, so why would why would I pay for a flight for you? That's not that. You're me and I'm you. Like, what? And 
he literally started breaking down and he started saying like how much of a failure he felt for the family and how he could never have done that for my mom and for us as kids mm. and like it was full on and i just like held him in that and it was super emotional for both of us and then i i i told him i was like dad you've been the best dad ever and what I'm doing now with my money and my success in my life, it has nothing to do with your lack of being a father at all. Like mm -hmm. this is two completely separate things. And I literally got to mirror that back to him. And he got to a place where he was like, okay, okay, okay. You know, accepting it in his, in his own way. But it was such a big moment for me because I was like, that's what I was scared of. And then it happened. Yeah. And then I got to deal with it and he got to deal with it. And then he shifted past that stuff and I made more money and everything's okay. <laughs> but imagine if I'd stayed in that loop, you know? Yeah. I think that I don't like to use the word test because as soon as we start talking about tests from the universe, I get the old paradigm of God being like, duh, 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 duh. judging you. Yeah. 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 So it doesn't feel so great, but it's the only word that I have. And I feel that the test happens often before the breakthrough yeah. to see, are they able to hold it? Are they ready? Are, and, and so we get to look at the challenges and interact with the challenges from a much more powerful standpoint, if you know that this is happening because it's prepping you for the next level. Yeah. Right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that's exactly how I see it. Like whenever anything challenging like pops up or happens, I'm like, okay, breathing, this is uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> this means that we're really close to a shift. We're really close to a breakthrough. We're really close to like tapping into a next level. And um, I think often with these next levels with money or purpose or impact or any of it, there's, there sometimes needs to be a clean out yeah. in order to create space for the new vibrations to come in. Mm -hmm. and I've seen this a lot with relationships in my life, you know, even it's interesting, like, you know, there's some clients that have been with me, like, like you, right, for so many years. And the reason you're still here and you're still synced in that field is you're doing that work. And so as my frequency raises and I become a whole new version of me, as are you, so we're still matching, yes. you know, and I believe we'll continue to match for yeah. probably the rest of this life. So, <laughs> but not everyone. Yeah. And there's no judgment on that. But some people that were like, oh my God, for example, you're like my dream coach like five years ago now are like maybe super triggered by me or like yes. not in contact or just, just aren't in the vibe or not doing this work or like, oh, I don't quite get it anymore or whatever it is. But maybe, you know, they needed to clear and release out of the system in order to create space for that. And that can be really hard, it can be really challenging, I think, especially for everyone listening who's a coach and like sometimes you go really really deep with people and then they can either you know drop away fade away or like dramatically leave your life yes. and it can be really tough I'm i think these have been some of my biggest tests so like are you really ready for this next piece because this this isn't a match and this needs to clear i'm know? so glad that you are sharing that piece because i think that people definitely have that fear when it comes to personal relationships mm. And also there is something different about the coaching relationship, especially when there's, it's a kind of a weird dynamic because you care so much yeah. for the people that are closest in your life when it comes to the business. You see them when they're crying, you see them when they're, when they're up, you see, you see the expansion, yeah. you see, you're, you're there for it all. You're there for all of it. Yeah. And also they're, your they're your client so there's also the financial exchange mm -hmm. and that just makes it i think sometimes it's like does the client know how much you really love them mm. and at the same time there's a payment there for your mentorship and your leadership and your wisdom and your skill set and so there's this kind of weird interesting dynamic that is happening and then, like I say, or and you said, you go deep with these people, yeah, and they reflect to you how much they love you, and you love them, and then all of a sudden it can be like boom, yeah. How have you dealt with that? Like, what is your process when you observe that, or you're in the middle of that happening? It's been really tough because I care about people so much mm. as well, and I feel I go so deep in my heart 
with the people that are close to me that it's been really hard at some points. And it's interesting, like when I started, even before I was online, I was really scared of that happening. Hmm. So I just didn't go deep with people. They were clients and they were clients and they were clients. And if you'd ask me like, are they your friend? I'd be like, no, they're my client. Yeah. Even if I'd wanted to be friends of it, I had such a strong boundary on that. Yes. And then I realized, okay, I have that boundary out of a fear of being hurt. Yeah. And having my heart hurt, allowing my heart to be hurt on some level. And so then I was like, well, that's no way to live, living with this big wall around my heart with people that I actually care about so much and I'm going super deep with. So I dropped the wall away. But then when some of those things happen, it can be really painful. It's like a breakup can feel like a breakup, <laughs> can feel like, whoa, oh my God, like now this relationship was like so there and present in my life and then gone, you know? And yeah, um, yeah for me, um, I'm just always really gentle with myself, mm -hmm. you know, and just, just really present to um, what do I get to learn in this exchange and what are the unlocks and um, respecting where they're at always, you know, and and uh, holding them in the highest always. But yeah, it's it's like hard on the heart sometimes. What I hear is that sometimes you just have to allow the pain. Yeah, and allow yourself to feel it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and I would prefer to have those moments that are a little painful rather than live with a guard around my heart. That's, That's my choice. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like your heart has got bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger and bigger. And it's interesting that you say that when you first started that you had the protection. And I wonder, and you still describe yourself as an introvert as well. Yeah. And I think that when I first started working with you, I was much more aware of you being an introvert. And as I say, I feel like your heart's got bigger. So does the introversion have anything to do with the heart space? And so that's the first question. I'm gonna ask you another one about your heart in a sec. Does the introversion have anything to do with the heart space? Um, no, look, I think you can be extroverted and still be guarded around your heart. True. And this is also the question, has the heart got bigger? Or have the walls dropped away more? Oh, is the heart the same? Yes. Right? Yes. Because I feel a lot of the work I've done specifically around my heart hasn't been so much like, how does my heart get bigger? Yeah. But it's actually be like, how do I live more from the heart that's there? Mm. And how do I allow myself to be like brave enough to go into deeper levels of the heart? And how do I choose to be even more open and living from my heart and my expression and in all my relationships, my intimate relationship, my clients, my friends, all of it, um, in that way where it's like the heart's wide open. Yeah. Um, but is it getting bigger? Maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? It's for me, I say that we're the generator and the conduit for love. Mm -hmm. And so it's just how much more love can you allow to flow through the yeah, heart space? For sure. And as somebody who is definitely an extrovert, but really it was in Mexico that I realized that I had literally been living my life with my heart almost behind bars. Yeah. I'd like put it into its own cage yeah. in order to protect myself for sure. from a very, very, very early pre yeah. pre awareness wound. Yeah. And I'd been protecting myself with my kids, with my then partner, with my friends. Everything was about protecting the heart. Yeah. And now I'm like, I'm willing to have my heart smashed into a thousand pieces because I know that my heart can actually handle that. Like my heart yeah. is really strong. Mm. And the flip side of being willing to have your heart broken is the experience of so much more love yeah. in my life yeah. and everything that I do. Yeah. Like that, the, the trade-off is worth it. Yeah. I remember ceremonies, sitting in ceremonies in Peru, even with the group and just having like these huge heart upgrades and yeah. expansions and you know, it's interesting. In that ceremony, I would have told you probably, yeah, my heart got all expanded and everything. But looking at it now from this perspective, I, I'm not sure it did. I think it was more like dropping away these walls and mm. these cages. And 
and you know, when you hear that, you're probably thinking like, oh, you know, that must be really blissful and nice. It was really painful. And mm. I remember like sitting there just crying with the pain of feeling like the intensity of my heart. It was so intense and like, and just feeling like these parts of my heart, like cracking open and coming alive again. But it was like even physical pain in my body. And I was having to like really breathe and like, <laughs> make sounds and everything because it was like oh and I was crying and then I remember Wampa being like are you okay like you're crying a lot and I was like it's because my heart is open it's so good <laughs> and he was like okay, okay continue yeah. as you are no problem <laughs> yeah I love living with an open heart yeah and it's interesting because there's a difference between being open hearted and having your heart open because i feel like i work with so many people that would describe themselves as an open-hearted individual they're they're heart-centered they love people and yeah and so many of us relate to that but it's different from your heart actually being open yeah it it's a it's a game changer it is and it's a choice and we need more of it we need more of it. Yeah. I When I was talking about your 33 million, I was saying that I felt that that was directly correlated to yeah. how much love that you have for the world, for the people in your world. Because when I say that, I know that there are some people who are like, mm, yeah, but it still doesn't make sense. Like, really, is it just about the love? What do you say to those people? Yeah, I feel I feel that is the underwriting frequency. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I told you this in a conversation maybe a year or so ago, but I felt like I was expanding into just caring even more about people. You said this in Peru. I was in Peru. Yeah. There you go, yeah. And it, it was like this, yeah, this opening into caring even more because I cared a lot mm. even a year ago. But it's like this deeper care, this deeper love, this deeper commitment, this deeper just wanting to absolutely be the best and provide the best and hold them in the best and like this next level, like just just really caring, mm. you know? And I, I feel like when you really embody that vibration and it's true and you hold it and it ripples through your team and all your products and your services, like there is something really magical that happens because there's not a lot of that love in a lot of places in the world you know, and, and I think the world needs more of it and people are looking to be held in that way. Yes. And even if they're receiving a, a, a $10 product online, if it's coded with that frequency, mm. like they do feel it, they really do feel it. And yeah, there's been lots of shifts and upgrades within my team as well mm. over the last year. And I think this is one of the, one of the biggest upgrades is like, they all care even more Yeah, and they cared before. We were always like very heart centered, very loving, very like family vibes, but it's like a whole new level now. I don't know whether you saw, but they made me like a, yeah. a video <laughs> for my birthday. And I'm like, what? And it's funny because they've made a video for my birthday every year. But it's not, it's usually the clients. It's usually the yeah. clients. I, and, and I, I never see that. it. They have this rule where they never tell me about it. I never ask for it. Like they always just do it. And actually this year, I didn't think they would do it because a lot of my core leadership has changed. Yeah. And so these are new people within my core leadership team. So I was like, oh, they don't really know about the video thing. I was kind of thought, you know, the person that yeah. was organizing it isn't there anymore. So there probably won't be that birthday video. And then sure enough, the birthday video pops up and I'm like, what? And it's yeah. from a whole new vibe. It's like, well, and it wasn't just a birthday. They'd written a song. I'm like, it was <laughs> like wrote, a poem. It was just like, poem. yeah, I know. <laughs> they wrote a poem and they specifically, if any of them had animals, all their animals yes. were in the video. Yeah. And like, I messaged Sheena, one of our girls, and I was like, she she had like eight cats on her desk. And I didn't even know she had eight cats. I thought she had like two cats. Like, I was like, Sheena, you have so many cats. And she's like, and that's why I wanted them all to be in the video because I'm so grateful for you because it's from this work that I can take them to the vet, that mm -hmm. I can feed them, that I can even have this many cats. And I just love this and I love you so much. So I wanted that to be in the video. And, I, and like, it's just, it's just a whole new like. <laughs> but I looked at it and I was like, this is the vibe, you know? 
And this is the vibe through the through the clients, through the team, through the products, through the services, through the other ventures and other companies that are like springing out of this cool mission and everything. But like, it comes back to this vibe of people just like really caring even more. Mm. And so that's a big piece for this next cycle and this next year. It's like, okay, and now how do we get to care even more? Yeah. And how do we get to love even more and express that even more and hold people even more and like make it even more epic? Like yeah. what's that next, next, next level? And my whole body is just like, <laughs> as you're speaking, it's really lovely. Yeah. I'm thinking about the people who are listening to this right now who are struggling a bit mm -hmm. or feel like they don't have the capacity, but at the same time really desire a breakthrough, really are listening and like, I want to have that experience as my life. What do you say to those people? I would say to choose to have the breakthrough. Choose to have the breakthrough. Yeah. And and when you surrender the struggle and you realize that your external circumstances are just a reflection of all of your past decisions, actions, and beingness, and that doesn't depict that next future. It doesn't mm. depict tomorrow. It doesn't depict the next year. And if there are things that happen tomorrow, it's because of those choices and vibrations and embodiments or not. So at any moment, you have a choice to create this new future and this new reality. But it takes courage to fully disconnect and be like, oh, you know, I remember I moved to London when I was 17 years old. I moved out of home. I was like, well, the furthest place from New Zealand is London. So I'll go there. I moved on January the 4th. It was freezing. There were three hours of daylight. And I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> I was teaching music to kids in a school. I was working in a primary school. And natural i didn't know one person not mm. one human right and people would be like oh you're the new girl you're regan hi i was like hey and then they were like who are you and i remember at 17 having the weirdest feeling where i was like i can say whatever i want mm. i'm not regan the 17 year old i'm not regan that went to this school i'm not regan from new zealand i'm not regan the music girl i'm not regan the da -da 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 -da. i was like i can tell them anything yeah. <laughs> i had this moment at 17 where i was like what if I told myself anything? What if I decided I wanted to be this now or that now? How would my next year look? I think it would look different. <laughs> and I just yes. remember having this moment where I was like, this is really cool. Yeah. This is really, really cool. And um, yeah, there's just this cool place you can sit in when you realize you actually can claim your power back in that way. You can choose who you get to be. And you know, when I was like over like multiple six figures and personal debts and loans and credit cards mm. and all this stuff, if you'd gone into my brain and be like, what is she thinking about? What is she focusing on? What is she writing down in her journal? Like someone would have probably put me in like a mental institution, yeah. really, because what I was dreaming into and declaring and sculpting for my life was so far from my current reality at that time. Yes that you would have probably literally marked me as insanity and been like, I think you need to get real with where you're at. Yeah. And here's the thing, I wasn't bypassing where I was at. I wasn't living in fairyland. I was also like, okay, and I'm gonna take this credit card and pay it off with that one and shuffle this around to make the minimum payment of that. Like I was doing it. Yeah. And I was like, that's done. Now I'm gonna live a life like this. Now I get to create in this way. Now my money experience gets to be like this. And I would just align myself fully to that. But the gap was so big. It was so big. So if someone's in that place where they're like, but my life, like, yeah, and <laughs> what are you creating from now? What's the difference between the people that say that they want it and they're doing it and they're ready and still yet three years later, they look like they're in the same position as they were three years prior. And you who says, I want it, I'm doing it, I'm ready. <laughs> and then 10 years later, you're like, and 33 million in 10 months. Like, what's <laughs> the difference? Well, I think, are you doing the internal work? Are you doing the work? What about the people who say, yeah, I am doing the then work? Then are you doing the internal work that works? Okay. <laughs> really, because I also know a lot of people mm. that are like doing a million hours of personal development or spiritual things, or they're sitting in ayahuasca ceremonies every weekend, but like, is that useful? Yeah. Is it working? Like, are the tools that you're tapping into working? Because mm. if they're working, keep using them and you'll get results. And if they're not working, then stop. And something also may work for you until it doesn't work, in which yeah. case then stop using it and find something else. That's why I'm so like careful 
with people and with my words on like interviews and things like that because often on like you know normal podcasts they're like what are your top three things yeah. da, 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 da. like I'm very hesitant to be like oh journaling's the magic pill or yeah. this or that or like it's different things at different times for different people in different moments yeah so it's really important you tune in and commit to doing this work but also is that the right work for you yeah you know like for some people it might be more embodiment work it might be more mm -hmm. like there's stuff in your physical body blocking the embodiment of those mm -hmm. frequencies. Okay, then do that work. Or it might be like you have like this deep past life trauma stuff like we talked about mm -hmm. earlier going on. Okay, then work on clearing that. And maybe that's through journaling, that maybe that's through past life regression. Maybe that's through working with medicine ceremonies. Like, I don't know, mm -hmm. right? And so I feel there is this mastery that's required around like, okay, cool, where am I at? Where do I wanna be? And also what are my tools? Mm -hmm. because the tools are super important and some people are like if you're just like sitting there with your journal writing things out every day and it's never worked for you stop doing it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stop <laughs> yeah it makes yeah. sense i had a conversation actually about this with ambition the other day with vision boards because you know so many mm. people were like yeah vision boards and create this and create this and i created like a good stack of vision boards a long time ago if you ask me and if you ask vision now do you create vision boards the answer is no, no. but that doesn't mean they don't work yeah. that means that both of us because we had this deep conversation about it have a way of seeing what we want and automatically visioning it in our unconscious and we connect with it it's like an internal vision board basically yeah. now if you go and tell someone who's just watched the secret to create an internal vision board they're going to be like what like yeah. i don't know i don't know okay get the magazine cut out the car stick yeah. it on the thing like that's going to work better <laughs> It's really interesting. Vision boards have never worked for me. And also I'm not a very visual person. So everything that you were saying at the beginning about feeling into the frequency, yeah. that is what I have naturally done. Like, And often it's an expansion of just where I am right now. When I think about 10 million pound a year, Suze, it's not that she's wildly different from who I am. It's just there's, I'm more full of myself. I am more free. I am more yeah. committed. Like there's more, the, the conduit feels bigger for the love. Like that's it, you yeah. know? There's a refinement in who I am rather than it being somebody who is not me because yeah. all of the versions of me that are in existence are me. Yeah. And this is a big part that I've been feeling like with my birthday and tapping into this next cycle. And I don't have full clarity on it right now, but I'm playing with it. And I feel like there's this like deeper version of my spiritual work mm. that wants to come through. Mm. And it's almost like when I tap into it, the reference points I have right now are almost like fully owning the channel that I am in a way that does scare me a little bit right now because I have run a story of like oh that's not mainstream yes and if I want to be mainstream I've got to dumb down the message yeah and make it more simple and be like everyone else and talk about the secret which I don't even believe in <laughs> <laughs> so these stories run in my head right and I've been very present to them over the last few weeks because I feel like there's this um this higher calling forward into that and it's uh it almost feels like being more known for that, even more than the business or the money or even some of the things that I've taught for for a long time. And um, yeah, it's interesting. It's like feeling into that next space. I remember when I was in Costa Rica and I felt that that was the, the biggest thing there was like the next part of infinite receiving. It was whilst I was in Costa Rica that that came through. But up until then, it was, I know that there's something that's supposed to be here, but everything that I'm creating, I'm creating from the mind and it's not supposed to come from mm. there. So you yeah. just have to be willing to wait and see and observe. But one of the big things was that this is a message for, it's just not the entrepreneurial world. This is a message for many yeah. people. Yeah. And... I hear you when you say that that feels, can feel a little bit scary when you're also committed to being more of yourself. And yeah. that is different from most mainstream spiritual teachers. Like yeah. it's, there's only one Regan. Mm -hmm. And so there's the, 
I suppose it's that's the trust piece, isn't it? Yeah. Trusting that it will come through exactly yeah. as it's supposed to come through in the right yeah. timing. It's a trust piece. And for me also, it's disconnecting from some past experience that I kind of experiences rather that I almost like created trauma from. Like I've I've had, I've, I've spoken on stages and then been like, please don't say this or this or this, you know, or we only want you to talk about this and this and this, or yeah, we want to do this program with you and put you on our platform, but don't mention this or don't mention that because that's too out there for our audience, yeah. you know? So I've had a lot of things like that, which I've kind of, I think over the past few years gone, oh, okay, I get it. I just need to like box myself up in this yes. way and then the world will receive me on a greater level. And there's like this big shift happening now where it's like, no, that box needs to go in order for this next wave of impact to come through. Yeah. And I'm like, but, 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 but the box yeah. worked. Like, wait, <laughs> I like the box. It's like comfy and like, it's actually really easy. And like, yeah. no, like the box needs to be like blown out completely mm. to allow this like true, truer essence to come through. And I'm being shown it in a way where it's like, no one's actually really done it this way. It's like a whole new card. I, I launched this, um, this three week container, like a week or so ago called overflow, right? Tapping into this frequency. <laughs> the branding for overflow was all of the levels. It <laughs> yeah. was so beautiful. It's so epic and it's a very specific frequency. And I, I kind of felt this transmission a while ago, but it was like, no, not now. And then, then I felt it, it was like now, but it's been really interesting because um, the way I'm doing these transmissions and the way I'm teaching it is completely different to how I've ever done anything. Mm. It's completely different. And I almost wanted to like feel it out with this tribe and this community. I knew yeah. it wasn't like, is it going to work or not? I knew it's going to be amazing, but it was almost like, it's like, this is a test run for the new code, yes. which is coming through. And right after I completed the first transmission, I was, I had so much more clarity. It was like, oh, this is it. Yeah. And so I think a big piece also for people is like, when you're feeling these things, like just also go and do them, yes. <laughs> you know, like I'm not thinking about how this transmission will be in a year. I just went and did the transmission knowing yeah. that it was going to be really different to anything that yeah. had ever happened before. And because I trusted it, it was awesome. And now it's like, it's almost like the confidence yes. comes and it's like, okay, yeah. That's how we get to do it from now. <laughs> yeah, I really relate to that. Really, really relate to yeah. that. I'm interested. You've just been on the cover of Cosmo. Is it Cosmopolitan and Glamour? Marie Claire. Marie Claire yeah. and Glamour, which is yeah. just next level. How did those covers come about? And what did you talk about? Because they were, were they both Ukrainian? One is um, in Bulgaria. Bulgaria. And the other's in the Ukraine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this came about directly from this mainstream template mm -hmm. code that I was building and then forgot about and then reactivated. And literally like a few weeks after that, everything started like clicking in the 3D, like super fast. And I was like, oh, I'm so happy. I remembered what I was working on. <laughs> um, so, and it's kind of like a snowball effect. So the Marie Claire one came because their team saw a video that I created about the Ukraine and what's going on there. Like when it when it all started maybe eight or nine months ago wow and i had this intuitive hit like you need to create this video now and talk about it and create awareness and i filmed it like usually if i'm doing a video like of that quality and level i would get a studio and my crew and like we really plan it out but i just i was like i have to film it now yeah so i did it like in costa rica with like either like on my camera or on my iPhone, like very simple. Danny filmed it for me. <laughs> I sent it through to the crew. We edited it out. We got it out in 24 hours and it went pretty viral. I think on Facebook, it has like 2 million views or something like okay. that. And it got seen by the right people that were like, we want you to be a stand for light in our country. So the Marie Claire one is really important because it's actually, it's the first magazine they're releasing since the war started because everything's been like shut down, no one's in the office, da, 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 all the stuff, right? And so they wanted wow. it to be, yeah, really a stand for people around how they can anchor in positivity and challenging times, what tools they can use for their like mental sanity <laughs> with everything that's happening. People aren't super aware. There's still a full war going on there. Our, um, our head of media actually lives there. And so she has mm. days where she's like gone missing because she's in a bomb shelter. Like mm. this is what's going on, you know? And so, yeah, the, the interview was, um, amazing. And for me, it was like, this is how I want to do it. You know, it's like all my work fused with mainstream where people are going to read it, where it's not just like, 
oh, Regan, and she's a model, and here's her, like, skincare routine. Like, yeah. that's what I didn't want to do. And in the past, I kind of thought I would have that to would be fit the into that box in order to then come out and lead them through the – and it's been so cool because it's been like, no, we get to do it this new way where the box just crumbles, and now we talk about this on magazines and magazines and on covers, <laughs> you know? And so from there, that created a snowball, and then the next one came, and it's the same deal with the Glamour one. Like, yeah, in the Glamour one too, there's like some beauty tips and this and that at the end, but the core of it is like – it's kind of like this code of allowing yourself to be a glamorous, powerful woman and a leader whilst keeping your like feminine essence. That's basically what that article is about. Yeah. You're famous for your tagline. Well, you're not famous for your tagline, but your tagline <laughs> is famous. You can have it all. Yeah. How, how has that phrase changed for you over the years? Or, or has it? Yeah, it it ha my relationship to it has changed. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Because in the beginning, it was like, I don't know. I think it was very material in the beginning. I think it was like, you can have it all. The money, the car, the this, the that, da, 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 all these things. And then I went, through, <laughs> I went through something like maybe four years ago after like a deep medicine journey in Peru. And I was like, what is this tagline? We don't have anything. This is like the worst capitalism. Like, ah, you like nearly deleted every post that wrote have it all on it. And like, <laughs> so all of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was like, oh my God, I need to change it. And then I integrated it and I was like, okay, like I can keep the words the same, but I can change the frequency behind it. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. I kept the tagline. But I changed the the energetic meaning and the frequency uh, rather than like having, having, I need to like go and have and get. It's like you can have it all because you are all of it. And mm. so for me, it's like this codex of like infinity somehow got fused in there and the energetics of it updated, which means for anyone listening, like every time it's said or every time it's written by, on a, by me or by my team on a post or an email, it's got like a slightly different frequency to it now. Um, so yes, my relationship to it changed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Even when I think about faith plus action equals miracles, yeah. the, my relationship with that has got deeper and deeper of course. and deeper and deeper. Like miracles for you now are like so different to what they would have been like five years ago, you know? <laughs> yeah. And also faith. Yeah, of and course. And belief. And action too. Uh, uh, <laughs> Action's <laughs> totally different. <laughs> it's completely different. Yeah. It's completely different. But isn't it cool how the words can stay the same, but the energetics update? Yeah. You know? And, and I think that's a nice reminder, even with our names as humans. Yeah. Okay, Susie, Regan, yeah, the names are the same, but the energetics behind them are entirely different. The energetics are completely different. And what is interesting with the name is for me, it's more about the being. And yeah. even yesterday when I went into a shop and I bought some earrings and the lady was like, what, what do you do? There's just like a brightness that's coming from yeah. you. And that's the, that's the energetics, that's the yeah. inner work, that's Peru, it's Costa Rica, it's yeah. the choosing of your heart being open. Yes. It's like allowing the heart to be open. All yeah. of that changes then when somebody says your name, like yeah. that representation is all in. It's your true. Name. Yeah, it's all allowing that light to shine through, mm -hmm. you know, and and removing, like Wampus says this really beautifully, he's like removing the clouds so the sun can shine, mm. you know? And the sun's always there. Sometimes you just don't see it because it's clouded by all the other stuff, but it's like returning it back to its essence of the sun, you know? Mm. Yeah. What do you want people to... Uh, what do you want people to feel right now? If you think about this next cycle, next 365 days, what would you love for people to feel? I feel I want people to feel a sense of deep possibility mm. for themselves. And then underneath that, a deep knowingness that that possibility is possible. You know, it's, it's like taking them through this transition of like, oh, that's possible, I could be that, do that, have that, receive that, manifest that, versus like the next layer, then that bridge transition into like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna have that, I'm gonna receive that because I know. <laughs> it's like that knowing frequency under that. It's like opened in the possibility and then like the depth of the knowing frequency. Yeah. Yeah. And when you think about the world over the next year, what shifts would you love to see? 
and experience? My prayer for the world is that people come more into their hearts. We've talked a lot Mm. about this as well. Um, And it's a big prayer. You know, we've we've just been at this event here and um, it's been amazing. And Lampra and I were talking about this this morning. We're like, there needs to be like a greater heart beat through this it's like this this it's calling for an activation even more so of like the heart frequency through this space through this industry you know and and i think that's pretty common <laughs> it's not an unusual thing you know it's it's unusual to find circles and communities and events that are fully centered in the heart actually mm. so i think the more that people can portal into the consciousness of their own hearts they're just gonna unlock things faster and faster and faster so I hold a big, a big, big, big um, prayer for humanity that, yeah, if my work can support in that and help with that, then there's going to be like really big ripples of that. You know, I know that if like all my clients and all my people and everyone receiving all the magic can go and like just be more in that frequency, the purity of their heart and their essence, then they're going to manifest from a different place. They're going to impact from a different place. Their life is going to be different and that ripple will like continue. It's really like dropping a pebble in the water, you know, and you drop that pebble and there's like these ripples that go out and out and out. So I just see it all as like the pebble I drop, the pebble my clients drop, the pebble, the people that even just watch that little story on Instagram. It's like pebble, 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 ripple, ripple, mm. ripple at the heart. heart, heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's really big. It looks really good in my head. <laughs> um, um, I know I asked you that question for you personally but I just want to pick up on something yeah. that you said about the fact that there are very few events where you really feel the pulsation of the heartbeat moving through the yeah. event that are not our events obviously because <laughs> yeah. yeah so outside of your events can you name any well Mind Valley for sure mm-hmm. and I think that's almost it okay in terms of in terms of like we I have a very high standard when it comes to this heart frequency. So I'm not by any means saying that other people's events don't have the fusion of the heart at yeah. all. But there's an opportunity for so much more. Yeah. There's an opportunity to get out of the mind and, and into this frequency and allow like this portal of magic to come through. And I feel people want this more than ever, yeah. especially after COVID and all the separation. It's like people want connection. They want love. They want to be seen. They want to be held. They want to be witnessed, you know? Yeah. And um, my Valley does a really good job of that. A yeah. really good job of that beyond like whatever speaker it is or this or that or information. Like people don't go for that. They go because they feel the heartbeat of that community. I love that. Yeah. I feel very inspired by that. Yeah. I definitely feel that in my future events, events are my happy place. Yeah. So when I hear that th- there's space for that, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. It's a Susie shaped hole there for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 there really is. <laughs> yeah. We need more of it. Yeah. I am excited to think about, we have Peru in 2023 and then it, well, our birthdays, Libra babies, yeah. this time next year. If you could put a, uh, just something in the universe that would be amazing, like crazy, like, God, wouldn't that be mind blowing <laughs> for us to be sitting and talking about <laughs> this time next year, what might that be? I almost don't want to voice it because I feel it gets to be even better than what we'll like the minute the minute we do that we put a construct on it yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, you know my my invocation around that is that we are having a conversation a year from now that is so wildly heart blowing we couldn't yeah. have even constructed it through our minds okay. where we both get to look back and be like that was our year. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was our yeah, and now we're resetting our Libra baby cycle, and we're going yeah. to this new place. But wow, like gratitude, lessons, unlocks, living life to the absolute fullest. Yeah, but really, like wow, like even a year ago, you know, I couldn't have been like, oh, and the cover of Marie Claire, and like you don't, you, you can't don't even have those details, mm. you know. And I think if I'd been like the cover of this specific magazine, I might have even have blocked that yes. piece coming in versus like a year ago, I would have told you like the biggest, most badass, expansive frequency ever that's like creating such a ripple of impact that's so in alignment 
with the mission and the work that we're doing here. And, and I think for both of us, that's like pretty anchored in, yeah. you know, versus like where we were a year ago and our prayer for the vibe. Yeah. So let's hold that prayer for the vibe. Okay. I'm holding <laughs> the prayer for the vibe. There's also something in the fact that maybe it feels just a little more magical the fact that you didn't say and it needs to look like this and you need to look like that and it needs mm -hmm. to look like this i think that often that's where you can get the little bit of the anti-climax because you've decided that if it looks like that i'm going to feel this way as opposed to i get to feel this way and it will look however it looks and however it looks is going to be exquisite yes yeah exactly Exactly. And um, it's kind of the same thing as well that you've been to the nest in Costa Rica, right? And everything we're creating there. And it's the same thing where, you know, we felt the bigness of what was coming and, but we, we weren't like, okay, it's going to be called the nest. Mm. It's 600 acres. It needs to be like this. Like the vision evolved through us and is still evolving through us because we were energetically aligned to that next level of impact and also that next level of like grounded 3d physical manifestation because a lot of my work is like very etherical you yes. know we're in the sense that okay you're with a client you have a session or you work together for a year or two whatever it is and they have these results but the actual work just still exists in the cosmos somewhere right it's like it's it's gone it's like oh we spent that day but now it's in the past oh we had these conversations but now they're in the ethers and the result is there with the client yeah but the actual work is just a memory it's a moment in time yeah so now it's been very interesting to like anchor the actual work by building buildings yes. and like <laughs> doing things like this where it's like oh we built it and it's there <laughs> yeah. we can touch it we can sit in it we can sleep in it this is good <laughs> so it's not that one's good and one's bad or anything but it's just different yeah you know and it's different um going into the manifestation of this so yeah it, it wasn't like okay cool this is like the exact vision and it has to be this way but it's more like it started evolving through us because of the frequency match mm. and even when we found the land i don't know whether you know this we i, I text you right i was like i bought a mountain yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then another one and i bought and another, another mountain <laughs> and another mountain now i have four mountains <laughs> and so we're standing at the top of the first mountain <laughs> yeah. and we're up the top which where the teepee was yeah. when you came but we're standing up the top there right and the river's like snaking out and there's jungle all around there's this ocean view and the sunset and wampa and i were like wow and i was like babe like this is where our house goes mm. this is so beautiful and he's like yeah and then we looked at each other and we both just got this resounding no it's like through the land like mm. through our whole bodies and we were like I was like, I just felt a huge no on that. He's like, me too. I'm like, okay. So we sat down on that land and we started connecting. And I, I'm just like, where did my house go? Mm. <laughs> I want to know where my house goes. And um, I'm like, what is this land calling for? Like, what is this? And then it was like, no, this land is for the people. This view is for the people. Like, this is the best part of this whole entire property and no this is for the community i'm like what community i want to build a house like, <laughs> right yeah but then we tuned into it and then we saw the expansion of the vision okay there's like there's there's a community here there's other people there's houses there's mm -hmm. an ascension spa there's all these things like but that that came over time you know that came even when we'd purchase the land. It's not like everything was planned out perfectly and then we found the thing and then we we're following the steps. It was such a vision that evolved through and is still yes. evolving through, you know? So I think it's a, it was a big reminder for me. I think it's a big reminder for a lot of people that these visions can birth through you as you're stepping forward. It's not about having everything like crystal clear and it has to be this way and then you take action on it. No, just like be in the vision, trust the nudges. Like when Wampa wakes up at 4 a.m. and he's like, I feel there's like this crazy mountain with fruit trees and rivers and waterfalls and this and that. And and I'm like, okay, we'll call the guy. And the guy's like, guys, this is crazy. This mm. property came across my desk last night. The guy needs out. He's in a tough situation. I've never seen a property like this. It's not even listed. Let's mm. go first thing in the morning and off we go. And then we stand there and we're like, okay, this is the vision, you know? And so I feel like these things can come through as you're walking forward. It's not about having it perfectly planned beforehand. Yeah. I think what I really hear is there's the 
willingness to be connected, to hear the nudge or mm. to feel the shift in vibration, to feel the no. Yeah. And how do you get to that stage where you're hearing it and you're feeling it? Because I think a lot of people are like, but but how? Yeah, yeah. It's it's like practicing the intuitive muscle. Mm. You know, it's it's I think we all have a deep connection to our intuition, but are we listening? Mm. And in order to listen, we've got to first create the space for mm-hmm. the listening to take place. So if you're so lost in the busyness of your 3D life, then all of your guides, your angels, God, universe, source, and all of your intuitive, everything is like, go left. And you're like, I'm going to go right because yeah. I'm really busy right now. And you're, they're like, but left. And yeah. <laughs> you can't even hear it, right? So it's it's creating that space. And that doesn't mean you have to meditate for two hours a day or something like 10 minutes. Tap mm-hmm. in, tune in. Where am I at? You know, every day when I wake up, it's like, a, it's it's when I come into this like waking consciousness, I'm, I'm in this like immediate state of prayer mm-hmm. or you could call it manifestation or intention or connection to the universe, or whatever you like. But for me, it's like this vibration of prayer and it's like deep connection, straight to source, connected with the universe, gratitude, and then clear requests. Like, mm-hmm. please support me today. Can be as simple as that. You know, please show me this and this. I'm going through this night right now. Please support me in resolving this smoothly or whatever it is. You yeah. know, my physical body feels tired. Please support me in more energy. Like you can be asking for what you want. And the more that you create these little pockets in these spaces, the more that you're going to receive mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, this feels right. Okay. Yeah. This, this doesn't feel right. Okay. I'm guided here. I'm guided here. And you know, you'll become masterful at then even like throughout your day receiving the guidance yeah. and the information because it's always there. It's but always you've there. got to create the space for it and the intention to tap into it. Yeah. It's all available. It's always there. Right always, now. always, always, always. <laughs> right. I feel that this has been really beautiful. <laughs> I would love for you to share where people can find more about you and your work and everything that's sure. happening. Yeah, reganhillier.com. It's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> Regan Hillier on all social platforms. And yeah, send me a DM. Let me know you came from the show. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm. I love you so much. Yay. And I am just super excited to just keep witnessing you rise knowing that we all rise together so Mm. thank you thank you so much i love you i'm so proud of you and (laughs) just constantly seeing you grow and evolve i'm in full celebration of you and your life thank you yeah love you